Oui. Okay. Hi. Uh, bonjour. Uh, I'm Lori. Obviously, uh, uh, I agreed to do the uh, Apricot this year with Patrick. Uh, and uh, for this webinar, on va faire uh, uh, cinq webinars cette année. Uh, le contenu, sauf celui, ça va dépendre sur les participants. Um, j'ai des idées parce que je suis enseignante et j'ai des idées qu'est-ce qu'on on a besoin d'apprendre. But this one is for uh, new teachers and new uh, pedagogical consultants. On va faire le tour de toutes les ressources disponibles, des autres ressources peut-être uh, on, uh, on ne connaissait pas. So, welcome and thank you very, very, very much for coming. Um, so, on va commencer, we'll start with the... Um, there's a, an English, an ESL teacher called Michael Rost who, he had, I like his golden metaphor, so I made some circles, but they're not gold. <laughs> but uh, it's a metaphor for teaching English, which I, I kind of understood really well. Now, for those of you that have already been teaching a while, ou les, uh, les conseillers pédagogiques qui connaissent le programme déjà, uh, some of this might be a little bit of repetition. So the outer circle is the what, the, re the middle is the how, and the inside is the why. So the why is what we'll start with. Um, speaking as a teacher, the why is to help the students with their goals. For those of you that are new to the pro um, to the adult education ESL, uh, there's a variety of programs, or I should say a variety of uh, diplomas or certifications that are offered in the province of Quebec. Me not being from Quebec, I've had to learn all of these, the DES, the DEP, the DEC. Um, and it's interesting because Michael Ross, he said it was his why is to help his students achieve excellence. And something for teachers, you might agree with me, is I gave that idea up on, in my first year. And it's not so much to help them achieve excellence because not all of them want excellence. So in adult education, we... Uh, we recognize prior learning, but we also recognize that it's individualized and each student's goals as well as their professional goals are different. And you might have a student who just wants to get their secondary diploma and they just want to pass. 60% is fine with them. So it, with them, you'll probably only get resistance if you try to push them or encourage them to learn more, to do more. And if you've been teaching you uh, this program, I'm pretty sure you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, so for those kinds of students, in a future webinar, um, I'd like to talk about the kinds of learning strategies you can show them to help them be successful. Most of them think it's just their ability in English, uh, but I think as teachers, you'll agree with me, it has a lot to do with the strategies that they use. Um, on the other hand, other students that are pre-university, they have different kinds of goals and motivation. And so that's what's nice about the individual format. Um, because you can help them with different kinds of tools and different kinds of strategies um, like uh, how to use credible sources for research and uh, citation styles and things like that. Um, and then as you probably already know we have students that have uh, personal or medical issues like I had a student with depression and when she shared that with me she told me how overwhelmed she was and so we changed our strategies to help her succeed. Um, so as a new teacher, that's something I would um, encourage you to reflect on, um, the why you are doing it, because that's really going to shape how you organize your program. Um, so the what, there we are. The what is uh, the adult education program. Uh, there's 12 courses, and then there's the optional courses. So as you can see here, like the... ANG P101-4, uh, for those of you that are teaching already, you already know all of this information, but the four means that there's four credits attached to that course. And the optional courses, um, I'm sure teachers are still wondering when they're going to be available. Not available yet, um, but uh, we're hoping as soon as possible. Um, so the thing with, the, with adult education, because we recognize prior learning, is that um, students can skip levels in the English program. I'm not, I don't think that's the case in the French program because that's French language of instruction. Uh, but in second language, uh, you can, and it depends on your center. 
Uh, some centers have us part of their standards and procedures, norme modality, um, how they classify each student. And um, some of them have a placement test that they've been using. It's a pretty common question about placement tests, to my knowledge. Uh, Mano, maybe you can uh, fill me in here if you've heard differently. I don't think the ministry at the moment will be creating a placement test for English in the adult education program. Uh, it's not in the plan for this yeah. year. Uh, so that's a yeah. So it's a question for each center or each region what they want to do uh, in terms of placement tests. Um, we used to use one that was it was produced by the province of Quebec, but it doesn't. It's not competency based. It doesn't fit with the new program right now. Um, the other thing about this um, program is being provincially mandated. You can't really change the courses; they're prescriptive. So. Um, actually, I have, where's my book here? Again, if there are new teachers or uh, pedagogical consultants, you can find all of these documents online. And what's really useful is at the end of each course, to save on reading, there's something called the end of course outcomes. Um, so that's helpful to just let you know uh, what all the students should be able to attain. Uh, well, probably not all of it because it's quite a bit, but some of the basic things, skills and competencies that they should be able to attain at the end of each course. So that's useful. Um, so yeah, this is a functional language program. So that's really, really fun. Um, it's communicative, meaning um, that meaning and fluency come before accuracy. So for those of you that were raised in a grammar-based program, like I don't I don't know about when you went to school, but for me, um, I remember my French class, it was always every single day we did the verb être, je suis, tu es. I mean, every single day, and I remember it, but that's all I remember. <laughs> so this is really, really different, um, and students are always surprised because if they make a few mistakes, it's considered normal, and it takes the pressure off of them. Um, so we'll get on to the how. Uh, this is a uh, English as a Second Language website. It's developed by two teachers who are also um, the English team, ministry team uh, consultants as well. It's designed to be one-stop shopping. So there's quite a bit in this website that uh, you need for your information. So the first part uh, is news. So if you're looking for information, for example, about the new prior learning exam that's being developed or the new optional courses, uh, anytime there's news about anything, they will list it here. And as you can see, it's been updated just last week. So uh, Terry, Charchuk, and Fran Brandau, they, they keep this up to date. So it's a nice place to go for information. Uh, over here, you have all of your courses. So si vous êtes des nou nouveaux euh, conseillers pédagogiques, vous voulez savoir c'est quoi les compétences, la pondération, tout ça de chaque cours, so, for example, in this course, 4103, you can see that it's only writing, and uh, C2 is a reinvestment of text, audio, or written, so there's no speaking, so that's it's a nice way to have uh, access to information. Um, if, if you use the uh, textbook Connecting Doors, and you would like your audio to be accessible online, you can contact Terry or Fran and they will put your school board up here. For copyright reasons, as long as you've purchased the books, then you're allowed to use the audio and uh, that way you can have it access accessible through them. I, I'm going to guess that they password protected or something like that. And they have that for each course. Um, over the years, they have collected different resources for, for each course that you can find useful. This website, uh, uh, sorry, this is one that Terry created for giving your opinion. They have a bunch of posters, a lot of reference charts and things like that. For example, here on how to write a letter. So different things you can use online or print off. So that's for all of the 12 courses and the optional courses when information and material starts becoming available. You will see that updated there. And as you can see for the old Enrichi course, 
um, it's been taken down because it was uh, terminated at the end of summer. So I, je comprends que tout le monde comprenne qu'est-ce que c'est des situations d'apprentissage. So for each course here, you, they put their learning situations or learning evaluation situations here. Some of the ones you find on Alexandrie will not be the same ones here uh, for various reasons. Um, so it's always a good idea to check in both places. They have these ones that are multi-level. And this is interesting because in individualized study, you have maybe 25 students who are all doing different courses at different times. It can be very challenging. I have never tried one of these, but it looks interesting. Um, it's definitely something worth looking at. And then you have your resources uh, for your teacher right there. And then the ones that are, have been approved by Alexandrie, here is a link taking you to their website. And I'm going to guess that everybody here knows how to use them. But you will go to English as a second language. You can choose here, situation d'apprentissage, or if you want any kind of exercise or a, like some kind of organizational tool. And then it will filter it for you. You can choose the course code. Si vous êtes conseiller pédagogique, ce sont des outils qui sont très, très utiles. Um, des organisateurs référence, des, uh, re, référentiels, vous dites. Um, aussi pour les élèves, ça c'est très, très utile. Ça explique chaque cours, ça explique le nombre d'unités, um, la pondération et les compétences évaluées. It's a very, very nice summary if you're new. You can just have that. Uh, with you and then you can answer your students questions. This one is just in more detail. Ça donne des indications uh, quand l'élève termine chaque cours, ce sont les, les attentes. Um, this one is for the waiting here. So for example, 60% is speaking in English and 40% is uh, how they reinvested the texts or their research when they talked in, in, in that course. These ones, you can print them, um, you can keep them digitally however you like. This one is useful, especially pour les responsables de, des salles d'évaluation. I know our exam person has found this document really, really, really useful. It gives the amount of time for each. Let's see if I can make this bigger. The amount of time for each evaluation. And if you are doing the oral interaction, for example, in this course for secondary five, if you're doing the oral interaction at a different time, it tells you how much time you can give the student before the interaction, uh, how much time in the exam room, how much time for preparation. This is recommended. Um, it also tells you all of the authorized materials and which ones have a listening portion in the exam room. So this is, uh, Terry had just taken the introductory document and adapted it for students. So something I was going to get into in just a moment in the student resources is um, uh, student booklets. And although I haven't finished modifying mine when I do, I'll be happy to share them. But this would be really nice because students often want to know like how many different courses are in their secondary three English or secondary five, for example, how many do they have to do and what are they all about? And so this is a really nice document to give them. Um, that's new. And she's got a little legend up there that tells you uh, what one is C2, which one is C1, uh, talking and writing, et cetera. This one is new as well. I haven't even seen this one. So here's a nice little surprise. Uh, kind of breaks it down um, in terms of the notes and the interaction. You get a lot of questions about the interaction. So that's that part. Uh, the program documents. These ones are in French and English. Ce sont en français et en anglais. Uh, les DDA, the DEDs, les, les, les descriptions de cours. And the program of study, unless you're um, designing your own teaching materials, this one you won't really need in the beginning. This one's nice to have uh, extra information, but if you're 
feeling overloaded, like you have too much work to do and not enough time, I think those can wait a little bit later. Um, so it will always be here on the website, so you can always check back later. Um, so that's for the program information. This one is really useful if you, uh, votre conseiller pédagogique ou votre responsable d'examen, de la salle d'examen, sont des questions d'évaluation. So les FAQ, the Frequently Asked Questions, uh, sont mises à jour de temps en temps, and you can go to Evaluation. Toutes qui sont en rouge, les questions, sont mises à jour, and uh, as you can see, there's been a lot of them that have been updated. Uh, everything from the fact that when you do notes revision, you can make changes to your notes, the dictionary and grammar book question, authorized materials, um, if your oral interactions should be recorded uh, and uh, saved, saved somewhere, all of these kinds of questions. So, um, je recommande si vous pouvez toujours uh, regarder là pour vos questions d'évaluation parce que there's a lot of information there. Um, and we'll go back to that website in just a second. So that's in here. Ça just prend un peu de pratique de trouver toutes les, les informations ici. This is the same link right here. They just put it in two different places. You also, as a side note, you also have program information. Um, so these are different questions that people have had about the program as opposed to just about evaluations. But as you can see, there's um, many more questions about the actual exams. For those who are new, it's just the exams of secondary 4 and 5 that come from the province. The others can be done by your center according to the DDA or also BIM. L'organisation BIM font des examens là. Um, not, les grilles d'évaluation, je ne sais pas si tout le monde les connaît. Instructional, ça veut dire c'est juste simplifié. Ce sont les mêmes critères que les évaluations, les grilles officielles, uh, produites par BIM ou produites par le ministère pour uh, secondaire 4 et 5. Et c'est juste uh, des mots simplifiés. Um, as a teacher, I can say it's always a good idea that the student has an idea of what they will be evaluated on before they go to their evaluation. Um, but I, in my experience, I always have to explain this a little bit to them. It's, it's a lot of information. I just use my highlighter and, you know, kind of do a one word explanation to make sure that they, they have a good understanding of how they're being evaluated. Uh, these ones are very, very simple. Si les élèves font uh, une situation d'apprentissage, ils peuvent faire, ou avec l'enseignante, une petite uh, évaluation. So maybe that's a good one to start with if your student doesn't understand a lot of English. As you can see, like it takes one page. I mean, there's a, a lot less wording there. Um, so, voici, ce sont des autres documents on a vu uh, sur l'autre uh, page de ce site. For the secondary four and five exams, if you have comments, uh, whether positive or negative or uh, constructive criticism or suggestions for improvement, you can fill out this form and you can send it in. There is an email address provided right there. You click on that and you send it in and they will be saved. And I know last year we received a lot of comments at the ministry and uh, we kept them all. Uh, si, uh, comme conseiller pédagogique ou enseignant, vous avez manqué le, la formation, les block training que l'équipe du ministère a fait il y avait quelques années, ça c'est ici, quelques places, this one here. Vous cliquez là et c'est tout en ligne. You click a so training and then you have they called them blocks um they were just different training sessions that they had in montreal and in quebec city and they have all of their resources here so some of the information i'm covering today 
is for people who weren't teaching English um, a few years ago, because if they had uh, gone to some of these training sessions, they would have seen some of the same material. Uh, il y a une équipe choc pour l'anglais, c'est uh, Terry Charchuk et uh, Jenny Lamoureux. I, I don't know if Jenny's doing it now. They do individualized training. C'est une formation um, spécifiquement faite par demande, par chaque uh, commission scolaire, chaque région, comme vous voulez. Uh, ce que j'ai compris, elles sont réservées en avance, comme l'année passée, nous voulons les, uh, réserver l'équipe pour uh, cette année <laughs> déjà pleine. <laughs> so, if you want to keep shock, I hope you made your reservation already. Uh, it's nice because they, whatever you want to know about implementation, English as a second language, they will help you find the information that you want. Et ils font, elles font, sorry, <laughs> elles font des, uh, des ressources pour chacun, and then they, they put them here to share with everybody. So, you just click on the Padlet and all of the resources are there. It's a lot of information to go through. Some of it you've probably seen before. Uh, for example, how to organize your classroom. We just talked about that. Parce que, um, for those of you that are new, l'implementation de nouveaux programmes, in the past couple of years, that's what's been going on. So there's been a lot of questions about all of these new exam structures and oral interactions and things like that. So that's why there's a lot of uh, material on it. That's something that you can go through at your own leisure. Um, pour ceux qui veulent savoir qu'est-ce que c'est une situation d'apprentissage et est-ce que ça va dire que les exercices de grammaire ou les exercices de vocabulaire ne comptent plus ou quoi, um, Alexandrie has made some really, really cute videos on um, what exactly is a learning situation and where it does it fit in your language program. So, so sont des vidéos qui sont en français, mais ils parlent clairement quand même si uh, les gens parlent vite. Uh, je peux comprendre si ça veut dire quelque chose. Uh, this one's really good. It explains the function of it, what it's supposed to do, what it's not supposed to do, and that you can still add all of the other materials that you feel are of benefit to your students. And uh, that one's also good as well. And si vous êtes intéressé développer du matériel, il y a um, beaucoup d'outils ici, comme Alexandrie aussi, ils ont une, uh, c'est comme une uh, analyse, une checklist, et vous pouvez vérifier si toutes vos affaires conforment à qu'est-ce que c'est une bonne SA. Ils ont beaucoup de vidéos ici, beaucoup de ressources. That's a very useful website. Ah, there it is, there, the anal analysis and appreciation tool. Parce que si vous voulez soumettre votre SA en ligne avec euh, euh, à, à Alexandrie, ils ont, euh, ils ont des informations ici, vous pouvez lire pour aider, euh, comprendre si vous avez bien fait votre matériel. So that's useful. There, because when you submit your materials to Alexandrie, they have a team that will check everything uh, and give you some comments and feedback if they feel it's necessary, uh, which is nice because it maybe is something you never thought of before. Uh, it keeps shock, okay. Um, Carrefour FGA, this one, maybe not so much for a new um, new English teacher, these ones here. Um, just because with 12 courses, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of information you have to get used to just in teaching the courses alone and helping your students through it. So although these are interesting and worth knowing, I would probably suggest leaving those for now. Um, so the two creators, uh, Terry and Fran, they both have their own websites and they like this thing called Seesaw. It's like a C'est comme une communauté en ligne fermée, mais dedans, l'élève peut enregistrer comme une interaction orale et peut le mettre dans le groupe, mais c'est privé. So, other people can't listen to it. And I've, I haven't tried working with it too much, but I hear rave reviews about it. Um, Duolingo, si c'est quelque chose qui vous intéresse, um, c'est un, une pratique pour l'anglais, mais pour n'importe quelle langue. 
c'est gratuit, c'est super, mais il y a Duolingo pour éducation. So, L'enseignant peut créer un groupe, comme moi je l'ai fait, mais vous pouvez voir chaque semaine quel élève a fait combien de temps. La, euh, the, the language that they cover goes, in my estimation, up to secondary five. So, si vous avez un élève qui est presque bilingue, probablement ça ne fait pas beaucoup pour cet élève-là, mais jusqu'à secondaire quatre, ce programme est, est tellement bon. Et ce que j'aime, c'est comme euh, il faut écouter et then vous mettez votre réponse. Et si vous avez un, un microphone, il faut parler. So that's useful. Um, there's another one called USA Learns. It's also free. C'est similaire, mais c'est plus comme des vidéos instructifs de grammaire ou vocabulaire ou structure de langue. And then there's Rosetta Stone. So it's a very, very um, expensive kind of software. But through the, say, Banque Q, the library, uh, it's like a pro the provincial library of Quebec, uh, you can have free access. But it's not access that you can have in class, but if your students want to use it outside of class, they can access Rosetta Stone to practice English through the online library. So if you want to know how to do that, just let me know, I can show you. And so they come to Duolingo see free rice, may. Je ne comprends pas exactement comment ça marche, mais chaque fois que l'élève fait les exercices quelque place dans le monde, quelqu'un est nourri avec du riz. It's not a joke. Apparently, this is real. I don't quite know how that works, but it sounds good that you're helping feed people. Uh, Quizlet, si vous voulez faire des autres uh, matériels d'apprentissage, vous pouvez uh, faire, c'est comme un uh, quiz en ligne. Mais Fran, she created some, and you can use all of her resources. She's very generous and she shared that all. And then l'autre, c'est Terry. Vous pouvez cliquer sur uh, son cours. Terry has more of the resources that we just saw on the CCBE DBE website. So a lot of the, um, a lot of um, these kinds of materials for teachers, but we'll get to that in just a second. Pour ceux qui sont nouveaux, pour les ressources uh, d'enseignants ou conseillers pédagogiques, c'est le forum. And vous voyez Patrick là-bas. Et moi, j'ai mis le, le premier après-cours ici. Mais si vous avez des questions ou même des, comment je veux dire, des questionnements, um, vous pouvez poser vos questions ici ou répondre aux questions ici. Comme par exemple, ici, l'enseignante a trouvé les nouveaux, oh, excuse me. Les nouveaux examens qui sont un peu difficiles à administrer et aussi difficiles pour l'élève. And, and then uh, the other teachers, they can comment and it's very useful. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so another place and you can kind of scroll down. Et si tu me permets, Laurie, juste un petit, euh, un petit commentaire. Yeah. Si vous n'êtes pas déjà inscrit au, au Moodle euh, après cours FGA, ça serait important parce que c'est par cet outil-là qu'on vous joint puis que vous allez recevoir des courriels en lien avec le, la communauté. Donc, si vous n'êtes pas encore membre, c'est gratuit, il va s'en dire. Donc, je vous invite à vous inscrire sur le Moodle FGA. Et si vous ne savez pas comment, écrivez-moi ou à votre conseiller, on, on va réussir à vous inscrire, c'est certain. Voilà. Yeah, so there, Eric, I see your name, placement tests. And uh, Deborah, um, Deborah is very handy with technology. And so she posts really interesting resources to add technology to your uh, teaching materials like Facebook, uh, she's got uh, a nice BBC video series as well. All kinds of stuff here. Um, I think here, Roxanne, she posted something about the whole uh, electronic dictionaries, if they can and can't be used during the exam. And so it's, it, it's a good place to go. Comme, comme Patrick a dit, quand il y a quelque chose de nouveau, ça arrive dans ma, mon euh, boîte de courriel. So, comme ça, je ne dois pas toujours chercher. Ça vient de mon inbox. Uh, that's something that I like about that. Okay, so that's Terry's class. Uh, dernière partie. How do I get back to here? Stop sharing. So, pour les élèves. Quand même, même des des enseignants qui, qui, ne, 
qui, qui ont enseigné l'anglais déjà quelques ans. Ils ont des questions comme des, euh, comment vous dites, des guides d'apprentissage, textbooks. Um, je crois que beaucoup de monde connaît le Connecting Doors, c'est très populaire. Il y a un autre qui, qui a été fait en Québec, c'est Bright Journeys. Um, so far, c'est plus pour la formation à distance, uh, mais c'est quand même une option, ça c'est so far. Il y a des autres comme, s'il si y a un, un guide d'apprentissage qui vous intéresse, vous pouvez toujours uh, contacter la maison d'édition pour demander une copie d'évaluation. So, ça c'est top notch, je l'ai reçu comme uh, évaluation. I like their videos online. They have, they speak clearly and my students really like them. Mais je trouve que, I don't know how to say that in French actually. The print, I find it a little bit small. Um, so that wasn't my favorite choice there. Oh, my mouse died. That's why I can't work. The one that we, we adopted at our school board is, is called Ventures. Um, they make a workbook and they make a student book. This one, as you can see, this one on with the camera, it's full color, so it's more expensive. The one you see here on your screen, the workbook is uh, paper, so it's not color, like black and white. Expensive, but altogether, the difference is very, very small. This one has a grammar and vocabulary presentation, whereas the other one is a complement, so it doesn't Um, so what we do is, I, the, yes, Eric. Yes, just wondering, the collection Ventures, uh, is the content mostly American or Canadian? Good question. It's American. So the only thing that I don't like is when you do a, a unit on money. But yeah. I did an analysis to see how it conforms with our program, because I wanted to have mm -hmm. an idea for proposing it to our director. Uh, and I did it with Connecting Doors, and the two came out similar. And maybe one didn't cover that aspect, but the other covered this. But I would they were both really, really high. So yeah, despite the money, like the fact that the currency is different, um, They do conform to the program. I'm happy to say that. And um, the students really like it because um, it's sim simplified and clear. But I've had a teacher comment that she feels it doesn't go into enough detail. And that's true, too. You can get supplementary materials. The good thing about that one, they have an arcade. It's a online practice, vocabulary practice with listening you match or you click on the correct word. So if your students are waiting for you and they do that, you know, well, I've been waiting for an hour. So naturally I'm going to watch videos or listen to music or chat with my friend. And you're like, oh, you know, you could use the arcade. And they actually enjoy it. Um, it's nice reinforcement. But yes, but I'm just curious, um, what made you pick anyway uh, ventures over connecting doors? There should be something that was more attractive to you? Yes. Um, for me, as a teacher, I have, my experience tells me that simpler is better. And mm -hmm. that's what made me opt for these. My original pick was this one, Step Forward. They are mm -hmm. wonderful, simple, easy to understand, great audio, online resources, all of that stuff. But the problem was the $50 price tag. <laughs> it's pretty expensive to ask a student to pay $50. Yeah, for, for students, it's expensive, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so we had to revisit that. Um, connecting doors, it's my experience, uh, my opinion talking here. Um, for especially, we have this for FBD, DBE. But for the lower levels, I felt that it would be more confusing. It's, They, it's not as in its presentation, but also in the target language. I just, that's kind of how I felt about that. I don't know if that's clear. Okay, so so, so far you've been using venture, Ventures for all the levels? Uh, for FBC, pre-secondary, SEC 1 and SEC 2. You've been using Ventures? Yeah, 
and then we use all right and okay i understand yeah because i'm just curious um have you um have a look at the um new safad the new ones that they've made with for one and two. Oh, for second one no not this this is because the first they had until last year was like two bricks like this was really incredible and they've changed it and it my students really like them they are very easy to work with but um, but the cycle two is definitely better with connecting doors yeah I am um, when we were looking for books for FBC I remember contacting them uh, so fat and they said theirs weren't out yet and we needed something like yesterday yeah sure yeah right now but mm -hmm. no that's good that's good to hear. I understand I actually I, I yeah. like so fads product a lot um, especially the audio they're nice and clear the way they speak um, but yeah at that time we needed a book we needed it fast and so that's what we grabbed but uh, mm -hmm. I'll look forward to having a look at their new evaluation copies <laughs> thanks for that okay um, I forgot to add in there, but um, if you need grammar supplements, there's Azar Grammar and they have PowerPoints online. You're familiar with that? Yeah, I see the head nodding. Okay. Probably familiar. Um, avec les grammaires pour uh, les élèves en, en salle d'évaluation, mais aussi en classe, quelques-uns ont fait une leur même. So at uh, Terry Charchuk's school board, she's made this free for everyone to use. It's 110 pages. And you can edit it if you want. Uh, my very hardworking colleague, Janet Kamutsis of uh, La Commission Scolaire Cœur des Vallées, she made her own, I think she and her, her colleague Heidi, they made their own grammar toolkit. Um, there, that's, there, that's how it. Because they want, oops, sorry, I want to make it smaller. They wanted something a little, a little bit simpler to not to uh, overwhelm the students. So they have in here, it's only 47 pages instead of uh, 110. And they have course information and all those kinds of things. Um, and that, if you want it, I can send you to her. She's made a Padlet for our region. So another thing that Janet made was this year she decided to use only learning situations and not rely on her books her textbooks for her students but at the same time she wanted to be sure that she was covering the correct language functions for each level so she went into the program of study and she took for example all of the different linguistic knowledge here secondary one two and three and just kind of simplified it a little bit. Didn't change the content, but just adapted it. As you can see, all of the X's, that just means when it's been introduced. And instead of the, like, you know, in the program, they have CE. And in, so instead of that, she wanted a, just a quick reference guide. So she said that she would be happy to share this, which is great news for everybody. And she's going to ask that it's on the CCBE DBE website. So that's in progress. And then she inspired me when I thought, oh, well, you know, I would love that for functional knowledge. So I tr did my best to copy her formatting. We won't talk about how many mistakes I made in Word, but she helped me out. <laughs> and we got there in the end. And so we have this for secondary three, four, and five. So uh, again, we'll ask that they be put on the CCBE DBE website. And I'm sure eventually the two of us will get into pre-secondary one and two. They don't offer pre-sec at her school, but at her center, but uh, I can probably do it. I just volunteered myself for more work. Uh, the last student kind of official resource I have, uh, I don't know if you know that Fran Brandau made these really, really great student booklets. I'll get to the first page here. Um, so she has, you know, their original level and maybe they did some kind of activity and she found out they were at a different level. She has the start date, anticipated end date, and then she copy and pasted all of the course information there with the website. And then she uses connecting doors. So 
So, and she's, she's agreed to share all of this, which is, is just wonderful. So for certain chapters in the book, she has which page you need to do with which activity and which language objective that targets. And it's just great. Um, she has the learning situations, which she has her students do. So for a new teacher starting out, this is a great starting point you could use as a guide to get yourself going and not really worry that you've that you're covering all of the language objectives because she's gone through and done all the, the hard work for you and then over time you can adapt it how you see fit kind of thing and then she's got all of her websites here she's got her duolingo i see uh she's got her quizlet an evaluation and so i did the same thing i, I took her idea and did it for um fbc so we have the same documents for um pre-secondary sec one and sec two i should probably double check that on the ccb dv website i think so um that was the tour that i had planned for new teachers et les nouveaux uh, conseillers pédagogiques um yeah, i'm other than this i just have some supplementary materials that teachers might be interested in but at this time I open the floor. Oh, we're almost out of time, anyways. But I open the floor to questions and comments. Have you already, oops, okay, um, decided what would be our next uh, topics, or is it too quick to ask? No, no. I have probably a list of uh, maybe uh, somewhere between 12 to 20 ideas, and I've been really hoping people would fill out a very short survey. But since you're here, let's just hash it out. Um, a couple of things I was thinking. A big preoccupation with teachers is whether to correct students or not when they're talking or in their writing. So I thought I would address that. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, my, my brain is still in presentation mode. Let me just switch back a little bit. So there was correcting pronunciation. But, but I, I, guess you, I guess you will send us um, some suggestions and we'll have to pick something for that specific um, meeting, I guess. Because it, you said that you have a few topics. Yeah, like one is kind of a, an introduction to adult learning theory. Uh, one is introduction to how a person learns a second language, like kind of how the brain responds, um, building mm -hmm. networks. Um, but if you have something in particular well, that you would like to know more about, I'm all ears. Yeah, okay. because you said uh, if you have like between 12 and 20 topics, um, you might find some teachers who would be more specifically interested in in exchanging on learning on a one. I'm just thinking like this placement test. I know we shared you shared something with me, but I think most of us are still looking for something. Uh, that we can evaluate according to the new program, which we don't have right now. And to me, it doesn't make any sense that we have a new program, but we have no placement test. It sounds a bit weird. Um, you know, it, if I can ask in your book, would you know offhand what's the most popular topics that you would sign up immediately for? The placement test, I can tell that would be a topic of interest. Absolutely. Anything else? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, well, I think you mentioned another one earlier. Well, there are a few, but um, I think I'm still concerned about um, 5101, 5102 uh, preparation, uh, oral evaluation, things like that. Uh, I know we've been doing some teamwork here. We try to um, well, some this management of speaking, final speaking, is is a bit uh, hectic at times. Uh, we try to do the oral as fast as we can, but sometimes it's not possible because you know of schedules and things like that. So I would be curious to see how other school boards work on that matter. That sounds great. Um, merci beaucoup pour cette présentation. Je voulais, je ne suis pas certain d'avoir tout suivi, là, mais j ai, j ai, je pense avoir compris l'essentiel, mais j'ai une petite question. Euh, 
Ce que je comprends, parce qu'à un moment donné, vous avez arrêté sur une diapo euh, où il y avait un cercle avec teacher et student d'un côté et de l'autre. Euh, le site que vous avez présenté, euh, English as a Second Language, celui que vous avez parlé, ça c'est une référence pour les enseignants particulièrement, si je comprends bien. Et pour les étudiants, pour le côté student, euh, je n'ai pas saisi, là, si, euh, si, est-ce que vous avez parlé juste des cahiers non, vous avez bien compris. Euh, euh, merci. Non, pour, les, pour les élèves, c'est les évaluations. Je voulais juste mentionner pour les nouveaux, euh, nouveaux enseignants, spécialement ceux qui viennent du primaire, que pour l'évaluation, oh, je voulais mentionner aussi que c'est la, la note finale. Il n'y a pas de projet pendant le cours, cours où, où vous donnez une note quelque chose, c'est la note finale, finale de, de l'examen à la fin du cours. Les autres matériels comme les sites web, les pratiques en ligne, les guides d'apprentissage, les situations d'apprentissage, si vous voulez en faire un ou une, non, une ou, euh, ou les y trouver à Alexandrie et le CCBI DBI website, c'est ce site web que vous, vous en parlez. Et juste les, les outils de référence Um, pour les élèves, mais ça ne dit pas qu'on donne aux élèves comme les, um, la liste de connaissances linguistiques ou connaissances uh, fonctionnelles pour vérifier que l'enseignant a uh, bien couvrir les compétences pour ce sigle-là. Ce que je voulais savoir aussi, euh, le site euh, qu'on qu a vu là, de, de, avec toutes les références là, pour euh, les enseignants, les, les fichiers, euh, les images, parce que les tableaux là, sont vraiment aidants là, avec les couleurs, avec tout ça, la structure. Est-ce que ça peut être utilisé euh, avec les enseignants, puis les enseignants avec les élèves? Euh, Est-ce qu'il y a des droits d'auteur? Est-ce qu'il y a une restriction? Est, tout ce qui est là est, est utilisable. Euh, OK, parfait, c'est bon. Même ouais. pour la salle d'examen, j'ai trouvé ça bien. Parfait. Merci. C'est très, 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 très pratique. Vraiment. Effet, euh, moi, je, je, je m'appuie toujours là-dessus parce que c'est, en fait, c'est vraiment la référence. On veut travailler sur la même longueur d'onde. Euh, ça prend ça, là. C'est vraiment un site mm -hmm. indispensable. Oui, c'est vrai. Euh, c'est des enseignantes, so, elles comprennent la même, euh, qu'il faut partager. So, euh, je, je remercie tout le monde pour être ici aujourd'hui parce que le plus en on partage, on prend une heure de partager le moins de travail de chaque personne. So, yeah. so that's what makes everything better and easier. Yes. And uh, do you have any idea when will be the next one? I'm thinking end of November. And uh, I, I'm going to pick different days to make sure that if people aren't available Monday, they're available maybe, I don't know, Friday. Well, nobody wants to do it on Friday, but maybe. Wednesday afternoon or something. 